Where do I put my hands, Simon? Well, I'm, I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> You're, You're with, with the, the Breaker, Breaker Leggers. And we are somewhere a bit different today. We are at the Birmingham Hippodrome. And as you can see, something's changed. I don't know, I don't know what that might be. Oh, it, it's this man just here. He's not Nathan. He hasn't had some radical surgery. No, I'm not Nathan. My name is Mr. B, and I'm with Simon today as a guest Breaker Legger. Yeah, we've got a guest Legger with us for this one. We're here to interview the lovely, the fabulous, the big blonde and beautiful Jodie Prenger. Now, Oh, I love Jodie Prenger. Last saw her in Abigail's party. She's currently appearing in Annie here at the Birmingham Hippodrome, but soon to be stepping into a completely different role, that of Helen in the National Theatre production of A Taste of Honey. So stick around and find out what she has to say for herself. <laughs> And I mean, I've got to say, it's a real treat for me to meet you. Okay. I've been a fan for such a long time. I've seen you in Spam a lot, obviously on the Nancy show. Oh gosh. Um, but you are brilliant. And what's really refreshing to see is that you've stepped away quite a bit from musical theatre recently and shown this amazing other side of you, which continues to surprise and delight audiences everywhere. Mainly me, oh, there you know. on the front okay. row, just fawning over right. you, okay. lightly. Okay. But you'll soon be heading out in a brand new tour of the National Theatre production of A Taste of Honey. Yeah. So, I think quite different to what you've done before. You've I think it was. I think it was. I think it was like last <laughs> time. She was. She was. She was wailing, wasn't she? <laughs> she was. So, what drew you to the part? I just. Uh, I, I just love I love this production I love this play I read it many many years ago and it, it's just so real and so honest and just a voice that I, when I was reading it I could literally hear the voices that sounds that sounds so wrong doesn't it <laughs> but you know what I mean it was I know just, what you mean so it came alive yeah just the way Sheila Delaney writes it's just it's, it's quite it's magnificent it's I just love it so I was really thrilled when this project came around I was so nervous when I went into the Really? Yeah, the whole kind so of dry teeth, you know, kind of it's everything I couldn't. Worn out, oh really? no, really no, but no, I'm really, really. So, so Jodie, for somebody who's never read the piece and never seen Just it, the, the, the go only go on, thing on, I know about it is from the research for this. No. Yeah, and I'm sure many, many Thank viewers you, won't, no. won't have no. heard of it. Either. <laughs> Briefly, can you just talk to us about what it's all about? It's kind of a, it's 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 so of its of its era. Sixty years ago, when it came out, it, and it was a kind of it was Joan Littlewood that kind of produced it. It was an unknown entity for this young nineteen-year-old to have a voice, and it was about working class. It's about the working class people in Salford. It's about their their fights, their struggles, the mother and daughter relationship, an inter interracial relationship. And also, kind of like we touched on it with the LGBT, we were talking yeah, before. Yeah, of its time. Of its time, which was unknown, genuinely Absolutely. was unknown. It was under the, you, you couldn't talk about it, it was there, I know. but it was swept, swept under the carpet. Well, the, the guy, it was actually on an interview, it was the guy who played Jeffrey, said that the cast were warned when it first went out, you might have to kind of run off quickly. Really? Well, which isn't yeah. a shame. Yeah, that means it's just unbelievable. But, if it didn't have that voice 60 years ago, it needs turning points like that. Yeah, And absolutely. that's what, you know, Littlewood and, and Delaney did. Amazing. Those many moves. So, so a true northern, gritty, solid show. You need to read this show. and I, watch I do need to. I am, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read when it I tonight. Think northern, I, I, when I, I think you. northern and gritty, I think of you, Mr. Well, that's <laughs> easy. <laughs> we, know. we are, Jodie. We're two very big, bold, brass northern <laughs> souls. What are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm loving the blonde. Keep yeah. the blonde. I, right? I, funny enough, I, I had the hair dyed for a production of Fat Friends, the musical came Ella. Mm -hmm. They kept it for Abigail's part and I've kept it. Do blondes have more fun? That's what we want to know. Oh, I don't know. It depends what side of the bed you can have. <laughs> I used to be blonde. So <laughs> Did I, you? Yeah, many years ago. Did you? <laughs> no. I can still see glimpses. <laughs> You're um, currently here at the Hippodrome where we are today yes. in Annie. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Stepping back into the part that you played before. Yes, four Ooh. years ago. Yeah. Brilliant. But rather different in tone between a taste of slightly and that. Just slightly. Um, but I mean, both strong female parts, yeah. right? I am very lucky that I do get to play a lot of these really strong women. I, I, I love it. I really do. But yeah, Hannigan's a lot kind of, I don't know, she's very cruel, isn't she? Well, she's with a great love of gin. I mean, I mean, is that? <laughs> love one, shouting that at children. Hold on, cruel, <laughs> great love of gin, shouting at children. Ooh. And Abigail's party, gin. Gin. Yeah. Gin in this. 
Oh, uh, oh there could be. There's a thing going just on write here. It does, it there could be. Does, it write it. does it worry you that it's I just think gym I need parts? To, I think I need to just, yeah. <laughs> I might need to kind of sit down and uh, kind of just contemplate on what the issue is, really. <laughs> when do you actually start rehearsals for this? So I finish uh, finish Anne on the 11th of August and start rehearsals for Taste of Honey on the 12th. Oh. Wow. So yeah, it just goes... So just a few hours yeah, rest? Just a few hours rest. No holiday. That's how we like to no. do with no holiday. Yeah. Um, now your career was launched on a reality TV show. Yeah, which yeah. Which was as, as popular today as ever. Britain's Got Talent still going, X Factor's entering its, what, 48th season? I thought I was really good on Josie. <laughs> 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 now, um, what advice would you give to somebody that was in your position back way back then that's yeah. hoping to showcase their talents on a reality show? In hindsight as well. Look, I, to be honest, I always say to people, I, I genuinely kind of almost given up on kind of fulfilling my dream of the West End and that was the truth but for so many auditions never just didn't come to fruition and uh, we heard it on the radio and went for it so I always say people go for it mm. but also prepared to put the graft in yeah don't just think reality creates quick fame because it's it's not it's not about that you'll gain nothing from that but being part of great companies and just learning and constantly kind of on the go is something that you have to be prepared It's not for. instant success like people think it's going to be. No, and I, 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 it does worry me that there is an element of, of kind of a, a generation that just seek fame. Mm -hmm. And it's not about that. You know, the world of theatre is something so special. And, and, so, and entertainment as well. It's something, it's an honour to be part of. And it's, just don't seek the fame, just seek... Do you feel that people from a reality background get treated differently in the industry? Th there, is a, there, is an, there is an element of that, but I think if you're willing to show you want to work and go you for it, it. You, you have to prove yourself. Yeah. But you have to prove yourself in, in, in any job. Yeah. Yeah. And your first interview, you're doing really well. <laughs> Thank, so you. There you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, um, talking Thank about you. being treated differently, I know that the Cheer Up Charlie campaign really oh, touched oh, our oh, That is so <laughs> close to our hearts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How did you get feel about that? I mean, and were you marginalised for your passions when you were a child? Did yeah, you I've got, I, I, I mean, I went to an all girls school, so I played every boy part going, thank you very much to being a chubby kid. <laughs> um, so, and then it was a friend, a lovely lady called Jacqueline Hughes, um, who obviously teaches Charlie, got in touch. And so we literally, everybody has rallied around this, this kid who was amazing he is there, fantastic there is he? an element it's, look you are different you are born to do what you want to do and, yeah. and if you want to belt out a show tune belt out a show tune if someone laughs at you for that you just got you have to be strong and know that there is a family that will support and you. that is the theatre community they are a family the fact that everyone rallied together overnight was like right yeah. into yeah. action everybody yeah. Yeah, i can't definitely. imagine another industry that would manage to pull that out like they pull i hope that they out would the I, th I think bullying in any form yes should never be allowed no matter what kind of corner of job you do it's, it it's just not acceptable at all no and it what would, a boost to that kid but honestly he was oh. he was the and his mum was there as well he was the loveliest lovely and spoiled so he, he'll, 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 he'll be on stage he soon will. I'm sure he will absolutely now have you ever turned down an opportunity or missed out on something that you've gone on to regret mm -hmm. is there something yeah, that's passed you know, you by <laughs> <laughs> there was one and I always remember it and it was just that I would have loved to have it in my tick list I was once asked to uh, present the scores for Eurovision. <gasps> and you I, said no. I couldn't do it. I was Not a gay man in the country is ever going to forgive you, Jodie. I, that I, fan I base are going to be like, what have you done I to us? I couldn't forgive myself. You would have been great. I wake up that. at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> still now going, going, deuce poire. Deuce poire. Deuce poire. Bless That's you. That's what we got. Now, you are known, you have your own podcast, right? Yes. It's called Mishap. So, okay. So, my life. Can you see what I'm going to go on to here? I think I've got an inkling. Your most embarrassing on stage incident. There's been quite a few. <laughs> uh, there was recently, there was, there was one in, uh, in Annie just gone. There was one in Annie just gone, and I, I ran around the desk where all the kids, and I don't know how I got there, but I went flat, splat on the floor. And it was like all the other. <gasps> And then all the kids went, oh. and I and I went, oh. <laughs> Did so you hurt yeah, yourself? I, no, we, no, no. Weirdly, I didn't hurt myself. But yeah, I, I do have a tendency to fall over. 
a lot. Is that gin induced, maybe? Maybe. Uh, there's a theme maybe. here, maybe. you know, maybe. the drink and the falling <laughs> over. Maybe. Something that we're really passionate about, something that we talk about a lot, is bad theatre etiquette. I literally, it's enough sometimes to put me off going to the mm -hmm. theatre. Yeah. I think something's changed recently. I'm not a fan of the, the light up face with the mobile phone. Yeah. I understand it if you've got an emergency back home. Totally get it. Yeah, yeah. Totally yeah. get it. It doesn't really, it's just, it's just, <laughs> but the thing is, so, guys, we can see the whole face a little bit. Is there that disconcerting having this sort of uplit, sinister face in the audience just Hello, suddenly? Hello, I watched it. Do you know what was lovely? And it was actually at the Alex in Birmingham, and I was doing Shirley Valentine, and I looked out, and they were, they were sat in the front row, you know who you are. <laughs> Three women, and they all had a packed lunch with them. <gasps> And, but it was lovely to see they had a lovely sandwich. Oh. And then they had something else. I think, they were, I think I can't. Scotch egg. Probably a Scotch egg, mm. hopefully vegetarian. Mm. And then uh, I, thought, I thought, oh, they must have finished by now. And I came on for act two. And they had a lovely dessert, but it was lovely. Oh. I felt like I was like... at a dinner party. <laughs> something like <laughs> chomping away and you can hear them. It's, uh, I understand, like it's, you know, people eat in the theatre, mm. people drink in the theatre. It's just a good job they're there, I suppose, yeah. because yeah. you've got to keep the theatre alive. They might be hungry. So in Annie, um, the role of Miss Hannigan has been played by women and by men. Mm -hmm. So if there was any role that you could do a gender swap, what role would that be and why? Oh, I could do a few in Lacage, I could say that, yeah. Mm. I mean, I that's quite like a gender <laughs> swap thing anyway. So I, I know, get yeah, I'd get away with it. With it. Yeah. Maybe a little kind of dabble in Priscilla, who knows? I mean, oh. the, world's, the world's my oyster. You could, you would make an amazing drag queen. I know. I could see her. Yeah. I know, thank you. <laughs> I'm sure. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that as a compliment. Oh, no, it was a compliment. It was a compliment. Yeah, it was a compliment. But a taste of honey is heading out on a UK tour. We're going to catch it at the Wolverhampton Grand between mm -hmm. the 5th and 9th of November. Mm -hmm. So can't wait to see you there. Real jewel in the crown, Wolverhampton Grand. I mean, it's where I fell in love with theatre being is Wolverhampton. Is it? What was lad. the first, like, first show? First show I ever saw was a panto there. It was Mother Goose. Thank you. And it was, who was the lead in it? Oh my God, he's dead now. I can't remember. No, but it was, it was. Sorry. It was, sorry. It was. Sorry, theatrical legend. It, you are no longer. That showbiz. That showbiz. Oh, but he was absolutely brilliant and I went I made my grandmother take me to see that same production of that show seven times before it ended. Well, I bet you were popular. I couldn't get enough of it and when they threw the sweets, can you throw sweets? No, you can't do it anymore. anymore. Isn't that a good thing? Because no. that memory for me as a I child. I just saw the buckets and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I saw it once where they pass around, they get a lollipop and they say, everyone have a lick. And oh no, did they? Oh, did they? Yeah, they did. But I think no. a lot of the kids knew better, but I think it was a bit of kicking the teeth like health and safety gone mad. I can't throw it at you, but spread your germs, loves. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that awful? So thank you so much, Jodie. It's, Jody. All, it's an absolute honest to God. It's a pleasure thank to you. meet you. Can't wait to see you in more acting roles because when you stepped away from musicals and we saw this whole other side of you, yeah. you blow us away every time. Oh, get out! Thank you no, very you much, though. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Thank, thank you. you.